Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to Wood by Wright 2. Today we are making the joinery that actually connects the headboard to the footboard. And we have one stretcher that goes from leg to leg and one stretcher that goes from stretcher to stretcher. And each one's gonna take a little bit of different joinery. So I wanna go into this and look at how exactly we're gonna be doing this. And we're gonna be doing something that's a little bit different. So let's dive in and take a look at that. Here you can get a quick overview of the joinery we're going to do. Today we're actually working on this joint that goes from the stretcher that connects the headboard and the footboard. And it looks like a simple tenon on here, but in the drawing so far I don't have the pin going through it, which we'll be covering in a little bit here. And if you haven't been following this series, we are making a white oak bed. And this is a really fun one that I've been, I've really been enjoying, but I've been taking my time on it and, and taking it step by step. So uh, we're going to be working on this. Now for the tenon on this, there's only going to be a cheek and shoulder on the edges of the board, not on the two faces of the board. So we're just cutting in about a quarter inch down on either edge, and then we will chop in uh, from the end to remove the waste. And I find it easiest for something small like this just to come in with a chisel and pop it out. In this case, the grain is running with me, which is great, but on the other side, it's not. <laughs> so it just takes a little bit more time and patience and don't take off quite as much. Get down close to the line and then come back and shave it in with the line and with the chisel, you can make a really nice finish on it. Now that we have one end cut, we can actually cut the board to length. I don't cut the board to length until after I've cut the joinery on one end. That way I can measure off of the end joinery as opposed to off of some imaginary thing that isn't there yet. Because most of the time with a board that has a tenon on both ends, you're actually measuring shoulder to shoulder, not the end of the tenon to the end of the tenon. And you won't know that, that where that is until you finish the shoulder. So now we can flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other end, cut in the, uh, the shoulder and cheek of the tenon. So it's a, I really found this to be, to be enjoyable, just popping off these extra pieces. Anytime I, I get to take off large chunks with a chisel, it's very enjoyable. But this, you get to take off large chunks and then come back in and do this fine finesse. And these curls are just a pleasure to take off. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice smooth surface and very happy tenon. And here you can see one that's actually going perfectly straight grain. And I was able to take off a lot with that. Made it very easy. So now we need to make the mortise that it will go into, and I need to measure up from the bottom exactly where it will be, and then I'm going to make a corner mark. And so this is one corner of the tenon, and what I'll do is then bring over the tenon and lay it out and actually measure off what things are. I know how thick the tenon is by the, uh, well actually I used a scrap of wood to measure the actual um, thickness of the, the tenon or the mortise. But for the length of it, I brought the actual tenon over, laid it on top of the possible uh, mortise, and then marked on one edge, and then flipped over and marked the other edge. And that gave me the length of the mortise. And that way I'm using reality as opposed to um, a measurement, which may or may not be accurate. Now, because this is a larger mortise and it's going all the way through, I'm going to do a lot of boring work. And I think it was uh, six, five or six holes, top to bottom, um, go halfway through from one side, and then come halfway through from the other side. And then we'll pop through right about now. Oh, hey, there we go. <laughs> it's always a pleasing thing when they come through and the two holes line up exactly. Now removing the material in between is actually pretty easy. It is a, a, a simple step when you just have these, these chunks sticking out. Just don't take off more than you need to. Remember, uh, it's easy to take off too much. And if you do take off too much, then you can't add it back on. So take off little bit by little bit, take your time and have patience, get closer and closer to the line until you have very little left, and then you can go right into the line and take it all the way down. Now because this is uh, from two sides, I'm actually gonna do it halfway down from one side, flip the board over, and then do it halfway from the other side. And this makes it uh, very easy to, to, to get it even and, and even all the way across. Um, the other thing about that is that you get a perfect mark on the outside line all the way around. And this allows you to open up the inside just a little bit. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth and flat. Here you actually see I'm checking to make sure that the edges are flat, or at least that the, that the chisel touches at one side and then at the other. And that way I know I have a straight line between the two corners that it's touching. Then we can take it for a test drive and drive the, uh, the, the tenon into the mortise. And this is always a happy time when it comes out and you get that nice clean line, suck it up tight against there and everything is, ah, yes, happiness. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's fun when the plan comes together. Now before taking it apart, I'm actually going to mark where the tenon um, intersects with the board because later on I'm going to be pillowing this tenon so it sticks through and looks nice. 
Now we have these pins that I have made up, and I'll be talking about where I got these later um, at the end of the video, uh, but I had these uh, forged by a friend in Europe, and I need to create two holes where they go in, and then we have to square out the holes. But before I do that, I actually want to test it. It's always best to test something weird. And so I, I cut a, a hole that is the same diameter as the width of the shaft, or a little bit larger than that. And then we can chisel it out and pound it in. You can see how it's supposed to fit in, turning a round hole into a square hole. And so I have the center point of each of these squares marked out, and I can drill through. Now these pins do not go all the way through the leg. They go through one side, then they go through the tenon, and then they go about three-quarter inch to an inch into the other side. Um, I didn't want them sticking all the way out because on the other side you have all of the boards and planks of the, uh, of the footboard and headboard. And then we can come back and square out these holes. And I'm going to chisel through the leg down to the tenon that's going through. And then we'll pull out the tenon, finish off that side, go all the way through into the other side of the leg, making sure that the square is a square shot all the way through the empty space of the, the mortise. And then we have the marks on the tenon, and we can repeat the process then on the tenon. So theoretically, when you slide the tenon into place, all these squares line up. The only problem is removing the detritus from the inside. I found sticking an auger in there just weakened it, uh, weakened it so you can pull it out. Here you can see how these actually come out. It makes it easier for moving in the future. You can just pry it out and away you go. And yes, it does actually work that well when everything is together. That was just my test piece ahead of time. So on the tenon, it's turning that round hole into a square hole and continue on. Now we get to actually do the test work. When we pound it in, does it all come together? This is the moment of truth. And in this case, I was very, very happy. And after this one, I only have one more to go. Tap in the, the join ring. See how this all comes together. Now we have a solid mortise and tenon that's locked in place with a pin. But in the future, we can pull that pin out when we need to move. Like so I'm, I'm really happy with this particular join ring. Next, we're going to be creating a mortise and tenon. This goes in the middle of the main stretcher. And you can see there's another beam that goes end to end on the bed. This will help support the, the main mattress supports on top. But it goes through a tenon on here, and it's a bit oddly shaped because it's not in the middle of the board. It just needs to look like it's in the middle of the board because the only thing you see on the outside is the tenon coming through. All rest of the board is completely invisible. It's underneath the bed and... Uh, so you can you can use an ugly board for this one. And this one I have um, some bark on the bottom. It's not going to hurt the, the, the shape or the structure or the strength of it. Um, the only thing that's really important is having a, a, a strong board from end to end and then to have a, a good strong tenon. And so on one end of the tenon we cut down about a quarter inch and on the other end we cut down about three quarter inch. So you may have seen this before, it's just a little shorter. Get it close to the line and then come back and peel it right down to the line and get a nice shape on the tenon. On the other end, we have to take off a large chunk, and that's always fun. <laughs> what did I say? Taking off large chunks with the chisels is always enjoyable. Uh, but yeah. So now we have one end cut to length, uh, cut with the joinery. We can then cut to length the board. Again, don't cut to length the board until you have the joinery on one end. It will save you lots of trouble in the future. Chop down, pop out. Happiness. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, I don't know why, um, but this is really enjoyable. Anytime you're, you're you're chiseling out and getting things closer to what they need to be, um, yeah. And I, I don't know why someone want want to do this with a power tool when you have a chisel at hand, but to each their own, I guess. Now we need to lay out the mortise, and again, I'm going to use the tenon to measure the length of the mortise. And for the width of the mortise, I'm going to use a scrap board that was cut off, and so I know the exact width at that point. Lay it out on one side, but then this time I want to transfer it around the board. And so what I'm going to do is put a nick up on the corner, and this will allow me to transfer that line. Right there's the nick. I can roll the board over and then transfer that nick to the other side of the board, and then transfer that nick down to the other face. And this way I know that my lines are exactly where they need to be on one side of the board and exactly the same on the other side of the board. Now we can bore this out three holes and we don't want to drill all the way through we're just going to drill until the tip sticks out uh, this way you're not blowing out the other side and ruining things you just go until the tip just kind of comes out a little bit check it with your finger and make sure you're good now flip the board over and drill from the other side and you drill until you move that little hole out and now you have all the way through with a really clean edge on both faces again with the chopping out this one's a lot easier because you're just going through three quarters of material as opposed to the three inches on the leg and uh, the rest is pretty much straightforward. 
Stay away from the line as long as you possibly can. Sneak up on it and work it down. In this case, it was a little bit too small of a mortise, so I decided to pare down the tenon as opposed to enlarging the mortise. Because this is all underneath the bed, it really didn't matter, and so it was just easier to take a couple shavings off the tenon than it was to open up the mortise. Then we can tap it down in place and make sure it's all fitting. Happiness! Uh, I'm really happy. So there you have it. I am in love with this little design here. Now this is something, I've never seen anyone quite do anything quite like this. Either you would put a wedge on the outside of the tenon or you would put in drawbore tenons, but I wanted something that was removable and functionable rather than just having a wedge in the outside of the tenon which would make it stick out so much farther. And so this was something I came up with and these were actually made by Rasmussen Lone Steingard. Um, I'm probably totally mispronouncing his name, I'm sorry for that. Um, but I actually got to meet him in, uh, in England uh, for Maker Central and he is making these for me as well as going to be offering them to anyone else who wants to make the bed. So if you want to do the same joinery I do here, um, I'll leave a link to that down below. And he has a really cool video on making these, so definitely take a look at that. So basically, this is going to be the way that the main stretchers will connect to all four legs, and when we want to move and take it apart, we can pull the pin out and the whole thing comes apart. The center stretcher then just sits in between the two end stretchers on the headboard and footboard. There really isn't anything needed to hold that in place as it will be held in place by itself. So this is a lot of fun joinery here, and I would love to have the whole bed set together and, and put up, but I don't have enough space for that in my shop. So the first time I actually get to put this together will be after it is finished and theoretically everything should come together. Hopefully in the next video we're going to be doing all of the finishing touches on this and going through some of the preparation work before we take it up and get ready for the finish. And so hopefully one, maybe two more videos and we'll be done with this bed. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please let me know down below and don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. <laughs> all those fun things really do help out the channel and they help us grow, so thank you for that. Also, if you'd like to help out on Patreon, I don't take on any sponsors on this channel. I want it to be what I say and not what the sponsors want me to say. So if you like that, think about helping out on there. I'll leave a link to that down below as well. So I think that's about it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Did you hear about the baker who asked for a raise? Yeah, he, he really needed the dough.